Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. Data centers are mission critical buildings where space and the provision of redundant power, cooling, security, and most importantly, connectivity is leased to some of the most important companies in the world. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview and comparison of the five largest and publicly traded data center companies in the United States. These data center providers include Equinix, Digital Realty, Cyrus One, CoreSight, and QTS Realty Trust. Additionally, we walk you through a comparison of the top seven data center markets in the United States, including Northern Virginia, Silicon Valley, Greater New York, Chicago, Dallas-Fort Worth, Phoenix, and Atlanta. After this video, you will understand who and where the digital infrastructure is being built to support the immense amount of data that we are consuming on a daily basis, whether it is for streaming videos or using applications in the cloud. So stay tuned and I'll break this all down for you. Before I do, be sure to subscribe to the DGTL Infra channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss my next in-depth video that is coming out soon. Now, let's jump into the video. So data centers can be broadly placed into two main categories, retail data centers and wholesale data centers. Let's quickly go over some of the key differences between the two types of data centers before discussing the specific companies. So first, retail data centers. These facilities are third-party organizations that are multi-tenant accessible, meaning that multiple businesses of any size or industry may house their equipment within the data center. Companies of all types and sizes, from small and medium-sized businesses to Fortune 500 firms, use retail data centers. Customers of these facilities have smaller power requirements and require help to manage their equipment that resides in these data centers. Moving to wholesale data centers, they provide space, power, and cooling to run large-scale computing or storage deployments. Tenants of these facilities are large internet and cloud companies that own and operate their network equipment. Space and power here are leased in larger capacities than in retail data centers, and as such, typically house fewer customers per facility. With that overview in mind, now let's move to discuss some of the key metrics of the five largest and publicly traded data center companies in the United States. So first is Equinix. The company trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker EQIX. Equinix is the largest public data center REIT and has a global footprint of 227 data centers, representing approximately 1,300 megawatts of power capacity. Equinix's disclosures are a bit different from some of the other companies, so they mainly quote their power capacity in the form of cabinets. And Equinix has 308,000 cabinets of power capacity that they serve their customers with. Overall, Equinix has 26.2 million square feet across 26 countries around the world, supporting over 10,000 customers. Within its data centers, Equinix has 387,000 interconnections, which are also known as cross-connects. I'll briefly stop and touch on interconnection right now because we'll highlight it for the four other data center providers as well. So interconnection is of growing importance for data center customers as data integration and low latency capabilities become higher priorities. Interconnection, or the cross-connects, provide a point-to-point -point cable link, which is primarily through fiber and is between two customers in the same data center. Cross-connects deliver fast, convenient, affordable, and reliable connectivity and data exchange. So moving to CoreSight, the company trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker COR. CoreSight operates 24 data centers, representing approximately 250 megawatts of power capacity and 3.2 million square feet in the United States, supporting over 1,350 different customers. Within its data centers, CoreSight has over 30,000 interconnections or cross-connects. Next is Digital Realty. The company trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker DLR. 
Digital Realty is the second largest public data center REIT, or Real Estate Investment Trust, and has a global footprint of 284 data centers, representing 1,800 megawatts of power capacity and 35.4 million square feet across 48 metros and six continents, supporting over 4,000 customers. Within its data centers, Digital Realty has 162,000 interconnections or cross-connects. Now moving to Cyrus One, the company trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker C-O-N-E, or CONE for short. Cyrus One operates 53 data centers, representing 836 megawatts of power capacity and 7.7 .7 million square feet in the United States and Europe. All of this is supporting over 1,000 customers at Cyrus One. Within its data centers, Cyrus One has 23,000 interconnections or cross-connects. Finally, moving to QTS Realty Trust. The company trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker QTS. QTS operates 27 data centers, representing 294 megawatts of power capacity and 3.9 million square feet in the United States and Europe. And together, these facilities support over 1,000 customers. Within its data centers, QTS has 13,000 interconnections or cross-connects. Overall, some of the key customers for these five data center providers are shown below. You will recognize many more of these companies as we all use their services on a daily basis. But it is really the five data center companies that we just spoke about which provide the digital infrastructure to allow these more consumer-facing businesses to function. So these customers shown include the cloud service providers like Amazon Web Services, known as AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and IBM Cloud. They also include internet companies like Facebook, Uber, Twitter, Netflix, Apple, and Salesforce. Finally, they include other developing companies like Spotify, Snapchat, TikTok, which is owned by a company called ByteDance, and LinkedIn. Now with that overview of the five main publicly traded data center providers in the United States, let's look at where they actually operate. So the seven major data center markets in the United States include Northern Virginia, Silicon Valley, the combination of New York and New Jersey, Chicago, Dallas-Fort Worth, Phoenix, and Atlanta. These markets are known as the tier one markets of the United States. Let's discuss some of the key supply and demand metrics for each of these key data center markets to get a better sense of why they are so important for the five data center companies that we just spoke about. So first is Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia is the largest data center market in the United States in terms of supply at 1,275 megawatts. Demand in Northern Virginia has been driven by large hyperscale requirements from companies like Microsoft Azure and Facebook, which has driven availability down to only 100 megawatts, equating to a vacancy rate of only 8%. Digital Realty is the largest data center operator in the Northern Virginia market and is among one of the providers contributing to Northern Virginia's 240 megawatts of data center capacity under construction. Furthermore, the Northern Virginia market has the potential to develop another 1,680 megawatts of power capacity over the coming years. But this power capacity is contingent on factors such as the data center provider securing a pre-lease on that data center development beforehand. So over the past 12 months, absorption in Northern Virginia has equated to leasing of 345 megawatts of power capacity, which has been led by companies like Microsoft Azure, Facebook, TikTok, which is owned by ByteDance, Google Cloud, Uber, and Salesforce. Moving to our second market, which is known as Silicon Valley, and also can be known as Northern California, this is a market with significant demand from technology companies and one of the tightest supply markets in the United States, primarily due to limited available land to build new data centers. So Silicon Valley has 280 megawatts of supply and availability of 15 megawatts, equating to the lowest vacancy rate amongst these seven markets at only 5%. 
Coresight, Cyrus One, and Digital Realty contribute to Silicon Valley's 25 megawatts of data center capacity under construction. And further, the Silicon Valley market has the potential to develop another 140 megawatts of power capacity over the coming years. So over the past 12 months, absorption in Silicon Valley has equated to leasing of 65 megawatts of power capacity, which has again been led by companies like Microsoft Azure and Facebook, but also includes companies like NVIDIA and Oracle Cloud. The third market we discuss is the combination of New York and New Jersey. And this market is driven largely by financial services firms. Specifically, New Jersey is a more affordable market than New York City, given New York City's relatively high costs for both power and real estate. New York and New Jersey have 150 megawatts of supply and availability of 15 megawatts, equating to a vacancy rate of about 9%. Data center providers like CoreSight, Cyrus One, and QTS contribute to New York and New Jersey's 20 megawatts of data center capacity under construction. Furthermore, the New York and New Jersey market has the potential to develop another 110 megawatts of power capacity over the coming years. And over the past 12 months, absorption in New York and New Jersey has equated to leasing of 25 megawatts of power capacity, which has been led by financial services firms Bloomberg and Citadel. The fourth market we discuss is Chicago. This market is a mix of enterprise, connectivity, and hyperscale customer demand. Chicago has 280 megawatts of supply, and indeed significant development supply from the past few years has led to higher availability of 40 megawatts, and in turn, a higher vacancy rate of 14% in the market. Digital Realty is the largest data center operator in the Chicago market, and is among one of the providers, including CoreSight and QTS, contributing to Chicago's 15 megawatts of data center capacity under construction. Furthermore, the Chicago market has the potential to develop another 165 megawatts of power capacity over the coming years. And finally, over the past 12 months, absorption in Chicago has equated to leasing of 25 megawatts of power capacity, which has again been led by the likes of Microsoft Azure and Facebook. The fifth market we discuss is Dallas-Fort Worth. This market is focused on enterprise and smaller wholesale deployments, including federal internet and social media companies, but less on large hyperscale deployments like Northern Virginia. In Dallas-Fort Worth, competitive pricing exists given the number of competitors in the market. So Dallas-Fort Worth has 345 megawatts of supply and availability of 75 megawatts, equating to an elevated vacancy rate of 21% across the market. Digital Realty, QTS, and Stream data centers contribute to Dallas-Fort Worth's 15 megawatts of data center capacity under construction. Furthermore, the Dallas-Fort Worth market has the potential to develop another 675 megawatts of power capacity over the coming years. And finally, over the past 12 months, absorption in Dallas-Fort Worth has equated to leasing of 30 megawatts of power capacity, which has been led by Facebook and Google Cloud. Next is Phoenix, the sixth of these seven markets. Phoenix has 230 megawatts of supply and availability of 20 megawatts, equating to a vacancy rate of 8%. Private data center operators, Compass data centers, and Stream data centers contribute to Phoenix's 30 megawatts of data center capacity under construction. Furthermore, the Phoenix market has the potential to develop another 1,220 megawatts of power capacity from providers such as QTS and Stack Infrastructure, which have available land for development. One thing to note about Phoenix is that given it's a desert environment, land in the Phoenix metro is less of a constraint than in many other metros, which is driving the development in multiple submarkets of Phoenix. Finally, over the past 12 months, absorption in Phoenix has equated to leasing of 35 megawatts of power capacity, which has been led by Microsoft Azure, Oracle Cloud, and PayPal. Finally, the last market, the seventh out of seventh market we discuss, is Atlanta. 
and leasing activity has picked up materially over the past couple of years in Atlanta with demand from social media companies like Twitter. Atlanta has 150 megawatts of supply, an availability of 20 megawatts, equating to a vacancy rate of 15%. QTS and Switch Inc., which is another public data center provider, contribute to Atlanta's 30 megawatts of data center capacity under construction. Furthermore, the Atlanta market has the potential to develop another 240 megawatts of power capacity over the coming years. And finally, over the past 12 months, absorption in Atlanta has equated to leasing of 50 megawatts of power capacity, which has been led by companies like Twitter and Workday. So hopefully you found this video on the US data center providers and the top US data center markets helpful. If you did, then please share it with somebody you think might also find it helpful and consider subscribing to DGTL Infra and visit us at dgtlinfra.com for more of the latest news on digital infrastructure. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like the video and post in the comments telling me what you are doing on a daily basis that is consuming a significant amount of data that ultimately may be going back to a data center. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.